I'm Kathy Overland with Prestige CV3. We've been invited to the opening of Paul McGee's show um, today. He has a new painting, apparently long awaited, called Old Baltimore Harbor. And uh, Paul's going to talk with us about his techniques and his concepts and all kinds of things about his art. Well, hello. Glad to, glad to be here. Great. Um, people have been waiting for this one for over a year. It's uh, my latest work. What we're looking at over next to me is the preliminary sketch for it. It's entitled Old Baltimore Harbor. It's a 1930 view of the inner harbor of Baltimore as it, uh, showing the uh, steamer activity, the panorama of the city, the old buildings. Um, this is the first step in the production of one of my large oil paintings. Before you get to this point, what kind of you, I understand you do a lot of research and um, it's a lot of work that you go through just to get to this point for one of your paintings because they're so detailed. Well, I'm a, very much into historical aspect of things. I do an awful lot of research, meaning I go to museums, uh, libraries, uh, scout out private collections of old photos, postcards, and uh, the less obvious items such as street maps, land plat maps, uh, written accounts. Um, I try to track down usually some people who are still alive who are alive at this time period, who are still alive now, to remember some, uh, uh, you know, aspects of uh, color or activity. You get a feeling of the life at the time. It's it's more than just a painting. It's actually the things that are were going on uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in this painting. Um, you said I was talking when I was talking to you earlier. You said that usually takes you about six months. Why did why did this one take you so much longer than you usually spend? Um, well, it was quite an involved piece and definitely it's beautiful i've also got you know many irons in the fire as far as uh publishing my prints and maintaining the, the business end of being an artist <laughs> right. alongside of uh you know keeping quality artwork mm -hmm. coming out of my little hand how many pieces of art do you have in print right now uh i must have uh 40 or so prints out. I wow. haven't really stopped to count. You don't look old enough to have <laughs> um, I've been doing this for a while. I'm aging rapidly. How, how old were you when you first started to draw? My first pieces, I guess, go back to about five years old or so. How did I know? <laughs> and I really started to get involved in it through the school years. And by the time I was finishing up with high school, I had some large oil paintings done that I thought would make nice prints and so I just went from high school into publishing my own pieces. Mm -hmm. So was most of your studying done like at, during your high school and earlier years and you just developed your own techniques with these things? Or? Um, my father is, uh, is a dentist and he painted as a hobby for uh -huh. 30 some years so I grew up with his works and so it was kind of natural for me to get into it and so my studying uh, pretty much is, is all of his activity. Uh-huh. Um, it's, you know, it was, it, was, it was a natural thing for me to get into. And also my own personal interest in history, uh, telling stories and, and the like, I can kind of mold them all together in the type of paintings that I do, which are mm -hmm. termed narrative paintings. They have little stories to tell, sometimes three or yeah. so at the same time. They, they each do. They tell a story, and you, you, know, you really feel what is going on in each painting. They're not just something that you sort of stand and look at. You stand and start to read it and start to get involved in your paintings. Yeah. That, the, the piece is successful if you can uh, look at it and, and imagine that you're, you're at the site. Uh huh. You're, you're seeing this for real. Uh, that's the illusion that I'm trying to get across. Your father must be very proud of you. <laughs> no, <laughs> so have my, you continue on and, and make, uh, make such a success of it. So you've done your research and you've now uh, done this incredibly detailed pencil drawing. Mm -hmm. um, where do you go from here with these paintings? Well, this is uh, 
simply a means to an end that we're looking at here. I will do a 30 inch wide drawing simply to work out the detail that will end up in the final uh -huh. painting, uh, namely uh, positioning of the objects, the uh, number of windows in the buildings, wow. um, and there are many other things that that link with each other, such as the, uh, you know, knowing the lengths of the vessels in the picture. What, and um, you, you were saying you got, uh, uh, what kind of research did you do to establish your, your lengths and heights and this kind of thing with the vessels? And also, are these particular vessels? Or are these vessels that you just sort of imagine after your research is? Well, these, yes, these are all actual uh, vessels. They were passenger steamers that ran on the Chesapeake Bay um, up, actually up until 1962 when the last two steamboats stopped running on the uh, Baltimore to Norfolk route. In fact, this was one of them, the city of Richmond was her name. But, you know, they were a common sight, especially here in, in 1930 and would be, uh, of course, very prominent in the harbor at this time period. But in order to do a piece like this, you almost have to do a character study of each one of the vessels before you uh, decide to include it in the piece, because you have to not only know the technical aspects of it, such as uh, uh, length and, and whether it, uh, the funny thing about ships is sometimes uh, they would take them off to the side and, and lengthen them and, uh, you know, change the number of windows in them or, or you know, various little things. So you have to know what it looked like in this particular year. And sometimes it's a real uh, bear of a research problem. So anyway, after I do all that, uh, to me, very interesting work, I will move on to take that. a okay. small oil sketch. This is a, a kind of rough oil painting. Doesn't uh, look very rough to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> when you see the end product, you'll, you'll see it. it's rough. Beautiful. But this is, uh, you know, obviously the same scene, but it's in color here for the first time. Sometimes I'll do more than one of these to figure out what is the best color scheme, which way I want the light to be coming in, whether it's, you know, late afternoon as this scene is, or early morning. And, you know, many things change. If I had this early morning, the light would be coming this way, and there would be different steamboats in the harbor. So I have to think of all these things to get them to jive before I head on with the project. With your, uh, I know there are lots of different brush techniques. When you are uh, going to be printing something as you do, does, mm -hmm. does your brush, brush technique come into to play much with how you do your paintings so that they will go into print? Well, oftentimes I'll try to sculpt the paint. Uh -huh. um, for example, on the, on the large piece, you can see this better, but on the large painting that I did of this, on the brick buildings, I uh, built the wet paint up a bit thick, and then I took, uh, well, I mentioned my father's a dentist. I took uh. one of his <laughs> dental explorers, a little pointy instrument, and dragged it through the wet paint, and I built all these little bricks on each one of the brick buildings. And surprisingly enough, a lot of that does come out the in, the, does come in out. the print, you know, in, in the end product. I was noticing so. the, the sky, the way he has all of his different brush strokes going is really mm -hmm. very beautiful, and it Some, makes that a really interesting effect. On a, you know, a plain graduation sky like I have like this, sometimes it does help to have a little bit of activity mm -hmm. just simply in the brush stroke work. Well, I understand that you are actually from Virginia. Um, so many of your paintings are, take place in Maryland. What's the fascination with Maryland? Well, uh, a lot of it is, um, well, to back up, I tend to paint areas of commercial activity in the not too distant past. I tend to remain in the uh, end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century for my area of, of, of interest. But um, I just got fascinated with the steamer activity that occurred on the bay and have done several pieces on Chesapeake Bay steamers and the uh, evolution of the, the sailcraft, the bug eyes and skipjacks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it just, as you, as you get into researching one project, you tend to find information and ideas for 10 other pieces. Right. So they all overlap and 
from one tiny interest in the beginning has sprouted to you know, lots of paintings that right. we see here today. Right. Um, I'm sure you must have some favorites and uh, or different interesting stories you can tell us about your paintings. Would you like to uh, give us little details on some of these things? I'd love to. Great. Welcome to one of Maryland's finest galleries, the M. Rebecca Leister Gallery of Fine Art, located at 28 West Main Street in downtown Westminster. Here you can find quality, affordable art and framing, as well as art supplies and sculpture. Browsers are always welcome, and we provide a toy corner to entertain your children. Some of the well-known artist work we carry include Paul McGee, Robert Bateman, James King, Martin Barry, and Peter Keating, as well as local art by Harry Richardson, Shelley Steinley, and Stanley Gilmore. For your convenience, we are open Monday, Thursday, and Friday evenings until 8.30, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday until 5. We offer Visa, MasterCard, Choice, and a layaway plan. Stop in, browse, let us serve your art and framing needs. Even though Paul is here at the M. Rebecca Leister Gallery of Fine Art for his uh, premiere of the Old Baltimore Harbor, I have asked him just to talk to us very quickly about a few of his other paintings that he has done. Paul? Well, this is called Faithful Companion. We see a, a sleepy golden retriever. He's uh, kind of snoozing on the step of this toy store. It's an actual scene. It's in Easton, Maryland, where they have the Waterfowl Festival every year. Uh, dog's name was Kona, and uh, this was just a scene I happened upon and painted it as I saw it back in 84, and uh, in fact, I had the decision uh, whether to show the <laughs> Visa and MasterCard symbol that was in the window of the store at the time and uh, remain historically accurate or to uh, take artist's license and paint it out, and I decided to go ahead and leave it in. Our next painting that Paul is going to talk about is Great Falls of the Potomac, which is just incredibly detailed. This is another scene taken from life, um, although it is timeless, as we know it. it you know, Great Falls, the, the written history of it goes back to the uh, time of the Indians when they would come to the falls to, to trade and the different tribes would meet. And, you know, it was, it was a place of power that they would come to meet. And, uh, of course, George Washington's uh, canal project was put up near there. And so it was quite a, an important place uh, that, you know, the, the new country uh, of, of the United States, they chose the, the capital to be uh, right below the fall line on the Potomac River, right below Great Falls. So um, it has a lot of historical significance as uh, a part from being a, a really majestic site to, to go and visit there now. It's uh, uh, the thing that strikes you the most standing here looking at this is the, the feeling of depth. The, you know, the, to look down here and, and see the, the rapids and the, the foam and everything, which was quite a, a task to paint. Um, and of course, the, the bald eagles, which are returning to that area now. Uh, the osprey and the eagles were, uh, their, their populations were hurt by the DDT and such through the 60s, and now they're on the comeback, and they, they are an occasional site at Great Falls now. Um, do, do you paint something like this from memory, or do you take a photograph and paint it? I mean, obviously, you can't sit there and paint this sort of detail. Well, I... Uh, Without camping equipment. <laughs> something like this, I will uh, set up shop on location mm -hmm. uh, down on these slippery rocks for a while. Mm -hmm. I will do uh, quite a bit of work there. I'll also do some rough sketching, uh, a lot of still photography, and uh, I'll even shoot some video. Uh -huh. So when I take it all home to uh, complete something in the studio, I will always have uh, a little bit of it live 
for me. You know, I can run the, the tape or something and get that, that extra feeling that, that moving video has as opposed to a still picture. Now we have one other painting that Paul was going to tell us a little about, which is called Lifting Fog. I had thought it looked awful lot like New England, but Paul tells me that that is not the case at all. There are peaceful places right here in New Maryland, just like this. Oh, that's true. That's, that's you know, it, it could very easily be New England. It's the typical type of uh, American country house that would have been built 60 or 80 years ago. and. Uh, this particular scene happens to be on the western shore of the bay. It's in the Tidewater area of Virginia, a little town called Perry, where my sister lives, one of my sisters. But uh, yeah, I went down visiting and came upon this scene and had to paint it. Uh, the reason for the title, Lifting Fog, was uh, it was kind of early in the morning, and the sun was coming up and uh, burning the, the, the dew and dampness off the the grass and such, and, and fog was was burning off as the sun came up. Uh, you know, just a just a peaceful scene, you know. Sometimes I will paint a, a a busy research project type painting like my Baltimore we were talking about, and then I will go onto something like this to to pace myself in my order of paintings. It, it's 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 great. All of your paintings are lovely. Welcome to one of Maryland's finest galleries, the M. Rebecca Leister Gallery of Fine Art, located at 28 West Main Street in downtown Westminster. Here you can find quality, affordable art and framing, as well as art supplies and sculpture. Browsers are always welcome, and we provide a toy corner to entertain your children. Some of the well-known artist work we carry include Paul McGee, Robert Bateman, James King, Martin Barry, and Peter Keating, as well as local art by Harry Richardson, Shelley Steinley, and Stanley Gilmore. For your convenience, we are open Monday, Thursday, and Friday evenings until 8.30, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday until 5. We offer Visa, MasterCard, Choice, and a layaway plan. Stop in, browse, let us serve your art and framing needs. Well, Paul, I want to thank you so much for talking to us about your show today, and I want to thank Rebecca Leister for inviting us into her gallery to do a program on Paul. Um, I think that we are unfortunate not to have a museum in Carroll County, an art museum, or in Westminster, but fortunately, Rebecca has the good taste to have all these wonderful paintings that you could come in and look at in her gallery and hopefully find something that you love. So uh, come by. Paul has 35 of his works here. Um, and come by and browse and see Paul's art.